How many arrows can we spawn into a level in Majora's Mask? We're about to find that out here shortly, but first, don't forget to like and subscribe so we can get to 300 subs. Lastly, if you want to see some additional content, participate in some discussions, then go check out my subreddit, Game Over Discoveries. With all this being said, let's begin. Imagine a room full of arrows that refuse to engage their physics. Well, that's exactly what happens when you freeze the code that tells the game when you're holding a puppy versus when you're holding a bow and arrow. This is the value when you're holding the puppy. And this is the value when you're equipping normal bow and arrow. And so whenever we freeze the value at puppy hold, we're telling the game that we're always going to be holding a puppy. In return, we tell the game, hey, I'm going to use an arrow. The game goes, no, you're still holding a puppy. And then suspends any arrow you shoot in mid-air where we can actually fire 200 normal arrows and no more than that. The game has its own individual code that keeps track of how many arrows are existing in the level. This was obviously done to keep the game running smooth in case you wanted to start firing a bunch of arrows like a wacko, so I'm about to do an experiment with all of this. But first, there's a few interesting details that I want to share with you. If you have some light arrows that you have just deployed, then switch to an ice arrow, all the arrows suspend in air will turn into ice arrows. You can't switch anything with red arrows, it'll just freeze the game. Also, we're going to litter this area with fire arrows and then play a song on Ocarina. As you can see, the fire and the arrows disappear instantly, and this also reduces the lag you were just seeing. Lastly, you never really get to see this, but the arrowheads have this reflective mesh to it. We can see how the mesh changes when we slightly turn our head to the left or the right. If we have too many fire arrows in one place, a couple things happen. For instance, we can no longer hear Link rolling. His voice is still there, but the sound of him scraping the floor is no longer present. I'm assuming it's because the fire sound overrides the rolling sound effect. However, too many arrows will get rid of the sound altogether. The next thing that happens is we get an insane amount of lag. This was kind of expected because it is the Nintendo 64. However, the game simply freezes if we try to look at the arrows, but resumes once the arrows are no longer in view. Which, again, is expected. So my new experiment will now be figuring out exactly how many arrows we can fit in one level. Now, of course, the level we're currently at is too populated. Too many characters loaded in and a lot of detail in this section of the game. So we're just gonna skip to the top of the tower before Skull Kid gets crazy and starts dragging the freaking moon down. We're gonna get rid of these green bases, then get rid of Skull Kid. Uh, I actually can't get rid of him, but I can teleport his 3D model somewhere far away. So long as we don't mess with him, we should be okay. Lastly, I created a script in Python that counts the amount of times I shoot an arrow. The number will be subtracted every time I press B, so it doesn't add one to the count every time I re-enter first person mode to shoot more arrows. But finally, it's time to run the test. So I got all the way to 261 arrows before the game started freezing again. Technically speaking, we found our answer. We have found the endpoint, but I want more of this. If the game freezes when we look at arrows, how about we just blindly keep shooting arrows while the game is frozen, then jump back to see if the game is still running. Then we'll know exactly how many arrows can be loaded in a level before the game eventually breaks. Already at 285 arrows, we can no longer unfreeze the game. However, when this freeze happens, the game is actually still going on. I think I forgot to mention that earlier. Yeah, the game is still going on, so you can still do things like pull out a sword, pretty much any action, and we can use audio cues from those actions to kind of know what's going on. Uh, so lastly, let's see how many arrows we can shoot before the game just officially crashes. After doing that, I managed to get all the way to 783 before all sound whatsoever was cut out and Project 64 crashed on me. Actually, here's the last image that was on my emulator. So I guess that pretty much finalizes everything. I actually had a different idea for a Zelda video, but I came across this after I was trying to see if I could carry the dog outside of Termino. But if you watched my last Zelda video, there was actually a clue for the next one that's going to be on here. In fact, if you figure out the answer, just post it on my subreddit. You'll get a shout out in the next video. And with all this being said, stay safe and take it easy.